Hey, what's going on YouTube? Alabama Reloader here. Um, coming to you off the back porch this evening. So, pretty nice grass is freshly cut. Uh, yeah, got the yard looking pretty good. <clears throat> we got our, let's see, what are we drinking out of this evening? Oh yeah, it's from Donald Trump. I wouldn't deport you coffee mug. That's what my wife gave me for Valentine's Day. But the reason that we're here, so so I was in Cabela's last night um, over in Huntsville and was just kind of doing some some window shopping um, over at the gun counter, mostly looking for optics, wouldn't really uh, even looking at any of the firearms, just primarily looking at optics. Uh, there had been some that I, that I was looking at online. Uh, and what I was looking for was something that would be a good um, sort of low development rifle scope, right? So for what I do, the reloading and the shooting and everything, um, I need a decent amount of magnification on, on the scope. Uh, from what I've used, the 24 power seems to be a pretty good uh, range there on the top end that that seems to work really well uh, I've got the Athlon Midas tack that's a 6 to 24 and then mounted on this guy uh, this is a Savage 110 tactical and 6.5 Creedmoor um, but mounted on here is the Barska um, 6 to 24 they call it their SWAT and yeah, it's almost comical SWAT um, illuminated reticle rifle scope, right? Six to 24 uh, with a 44 millimeter objective. And it's not terrible. Um, it's just got a mill dot reticle. So, you know, second focal plane, nothing to write home about, but it's got 24, the magnification goes up to 24. So, you know, you're able to zoom in quite a bit and it works great for low development testing and that type of thing. So, uh, but the clarity of the glass is pretty, um, pretty poor, I'll say. I mean, I don't really know what else to expect at the price point. I, I want to say they sell this scope. It's like less than 250 bucks. I think you can find that one, that particular SWAT, right? SWAT model. Um, I believe on Optics Planet or some other places that I've looked, because I'm actually good, I'm planning on probably selling that, that that scope now that I picked this one up. But we're gonna do an unboxing that's not really an unboxing um, because I've already taken the scope out of the box. I'm just gonna show you what all comes in the in the box. I'm gonna show you the scope, uh, and we'll go from there. So what I what I decided to pick up was a Cabela's Covenant tactical rifle scope i was in there looking around browsing around at the at the uh over at the optics and i kind of had a, a certain price range that i wanted to stick stick within you know i didn't want to spend too much again this is just going to live on a rifle that's getting tested uh, low development testing done so i didn't want to spend a ton of money uh, but i also wanted the scope to be usable if i did you know decide to take it out and, and do some hunting with it um, I wanted it to be usable, so I, I didn't want my starting magnification to be to the point where I wouldn't really, I wouldn't be able to take it out in the woods, right? Like I had looked at some, some rifle scopes, uh, some manufacturers, you know, they offer something like an eight to 32, a 10 to 40. Um, I've even seen some, uh, there was one I saw, I can't remember the brand, I never heard of the brand. It was like a 12 to 60 power, uh, rifle scope. You know, not a spotting scope, a 12 to 60 rifle scope. I, I was like, okay, this is just, it's getting borderline ridiculous at that point. Um, but I wanted something that was low enough in magnification. I could actually use it, would be usable with better glass clarity than what this guy has. And, uh, but a decent amount of magnification so I could hold really tight um, on whatever I was aiming at, you know, for low development since... I'm a big fan of shooting those quarter inch dots. Um, you need something with a, a good amount of magnification so you can actually see them. So 
Uh, we went with the Cabela's Covenant 7. Uh, and I went with the second focal plane. This thing is 5 to 35 on your magnification. So <laughs> 5 power uh, is definitely usable in the field. Um, and then 35 power, it, it was it was much higher than I was anticipating um, for the price with a 56 millimeter objective and a 34 millimeter tube. Now this tube, I mean, looking through the 34 mil tube, I mean, good night at the difference um, between looking through something like a one inch tube or a, even a 30 mil tube. Um, the 34, it just, I don't know, the side picture is just so much larger. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know. I, w I wouldn't expect them that. It's, it's the first scope I've owned with that with that size tube diameter, so pretty cool there. Um, but I went ahead and picked it up. It was, uh, they had it listed at uh, $349.99. And then um, I told the guys, like, ah, that's a little more than I want to pay. You know, I mean, it's a second focal plane scope, which, again, I don't really mind for the shooting that I'm doing. I don't need a first focal plane, so not that big of a deal, not a deal breaker. I was like 350, that's not terrible for the magnification range that, that this thing offers. The glass, it's not great. I mean, it's it's a $350 scope. Really, it's a it's around a sub $300 scope, in my opinion, in terms of glass and stuff. It's, you know, it's around your two to $300 range, price range, that's the clarity that we're talking about. So nothing amazing. Um, Athlon Optics has better clarity um, on some of their scopes that they offer that around that $300 price range. But this allows more magnification, so there's some trade-offs. Um, and it has their, uh, what is it? Attack 8 reticle. So essentially that's similar to like a Christmas tree style reticle. Um, and it goes to eight mils. Um, your sub tensions go out to eight mils. So that's, that's pretty cool. And since it is second focal plane, it only, the sub tensions are only correct on the 21st power, right? On the magnification. And they actually have that noted on the scope. There's a little dot right, right after the 20, uh, there's a little dot and that's where your, your sub tensions are correct on the reticle. So if you want to do holdovers and those type things, uh, without having to do any uh, calculations and transferring, you know, your measurements and stuff, then you're going to have to have it on 21 power to do that. So if you're into that kind of stuff. But that's what we went with, uh, lifetime warranty. So that's pretty cool. Um, waterproof, fog proof. Yeah, just your run of the mill. There you go. That's what she looks like on the box. So you open this guy up, and you shake it loose, and there's nothing in the box. Uh, that's because we already took everything out, took the scope out, what matters. Um, but it, what it does come with, and here, I'll show you guys the scope here in a second. Um, trying to do all this one-handed also. So I appreciate the patience. Um, it comes with your Covenant Rifle Scope Manual. You've got your second focal plane. See, there's the reticle, like I was telling you. So it's, it's basically like that Christmas tree style reticle. Let's see if we can get this thing to focus. For some reason, it's not wanting to. There we go. So that tells you all of the um, dimensions that you need to know on the reticle. So it has a has a floating center dot, which I have really come to like. That's what the Midas Tack has. And I just, I, I don't know. I am I really find myself drawn to that that style, that floating center dot. I feel I can hold um, pretty tight with that, with that setup. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Uh, with this being a second focal plane, the reticle does not change in size. It is the exact same size throughout the entire magnification range. So that's pretty cool as well. Um, and that's your first focal plane stuff down there. So, yeah. So, second focal plane. They have uh, a couple of these. I think, yeah, the 3 to 21 and then 5 to 35 for their Covenant 7. So, there you go. Pretty cool stuff. So, that basically explains all of that. 
you get, of course, your cleaning cloth for the lens. We'll throw that down there. You get Cabela's uh, scope cover. And this thing covers the entire scope, so it's not just like a lens cover or whatever. Um, it just sort of blankets the entire scope. So I thought that was a pretty cool touch. That's not bad. Uh, what else? Yeah, it's got some foam on the ends. It comes with all your your Allen keys and all that that you'll need uh, to tighten everything up. And then this guy's just got your user instructions and that's it. So uh, one thing I did, I did find pretty funny was when I went to check out and the lady was like, Hey, uh, do you want to, do you want the three year extended warranty on it for 89 97? And I'm like 90 bucks for three years i was like good god the scope only cost the the scope ended up only being 289.97 it was on sale they had it marked for 349 but it was 289.97 on sale and i'm like are you kidding me i mean it's got a lifetime warranty I, i'll keep the receipt and if it breaks i'll come up here and complain to the point where i just either get a replacement or you guys give me store credit i was like that's just how this is gonna work i mean that's why it says lifetime warranty on the side so yeah, just keep that in mind. If you're going to go buy something from them, a rifle scope or whatever, and they try to sell you some additional extended warranty, that's a joke. I mean, that's an absolute joke. So uh, that's the stuff that comes in the box. Now let's show you the actual scope. Um, I laid it down over here. This guy is a freaking monster. Uh, but a couple of cool things that it, that it does come with. Uh, this throw lever, uh, you actually have to install that. It's just a little piece of aluminum that screws right in um, to your adjustment to your adjustment ring. So that's pretty cool. And then you have a sunshade. You can tell where, there we go. You, the rest of that part is uh, sunshade. So that I screwed on, went ahead and put that on there. But this dude is like a freaking tank, man. I mean, 34 mil tube. It's <laughs> Joker is heavy as all get out. Um, yeah, I had to go buy, uh, I didn't have any rings that would fit it, so I went and bought some worn, I think that's how you say it, whatever, worn, uh, medium height, uh, 34 mil rings to, to mount it up, mostly because the, the Savage 110 Tactical, it comes with a 20 MOA base already installed from the factory, so yeah, I decided to go with the medium rings, I think those are high that are on there now. We'll see if it, we'll see if it works. We'll put it to the test, see if we get close to that barrel with the 56 millimeter objective. But I mean, this thing, trying again, trying to do this one handed. I don't know if you can hear it, but I know a lot of people really get off on listening to people check the turrets on the scope, but pretty cool stuff. It's uh you know, the, the reticle is in mills, um, the turrets are in mills, so that's good. You, you definitely want to make sure you're, you're paying attention to that if you're buying a scope. Uh, you, whatever you go with, um, MOA or, or mills, make sure your turrets and your reticle match. Uh, it just makes life a lot easier. There you go, 5 to 35 by 56. Um, pretty easy on the uh, magnification. Once you work, work it a few times, you know, it kind of loosens up pretty stiff right out of the box. Uh, your parallax adjustment over here, you go from, I think it's 15, yeah, 15 yards to infinity, which is pretty cool, um, pretty easy to adjust there. It does have a zero stop, which is pretty neat, which is already uh, in place, so right there, I can't go any lower, so right there. So the zero stop, we've already got it set. Uh, of course, we're going to have to make adjustments to it. We haven't even got it mounted to the rifle yet but i thought that was pretty cool so there you go and you can slip the the turrets back to zero you know you just take off um, remove that screw on both pull the turrets off slip them back to zero and you're you're good to go so pretty pretty cool uh setup i mean not a lot of bells and whistles again second focal plane so the reticle stays the same size um I'm not going to try to show you the reticle through the scope because every scope review on YouTube, when you watch them, every single time somebody does that, they always caveat it with, well, it looks a lot clearer with the naked eye, so you just have to trust me. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and say it instead of actually doing it. I'm just gonna tell you, it looks pretty good. It's not, you know, super crisp and it, it's not amazing. I'm not saying it definitely wouldn't replace my Athlon Optics uh, Midas Tac. It, it wouldn't replace that at all. This is just simply gonna be a load verification, load testing uh, platform that will transfer from rifle to rifle. Like this Savage 110 Tactical, once we, I mean, we've got good loads identified for it, but whenever hunting season rolls around, uh, deer season rolls around, I'm actually gonna take this scope off and I'll more than likely be putting something uh, like an Athlon one to eight possibly. Um, I've been looking at those, an Athlon uh, Optics one to eight. Um, because again, the hunting that we do, I mean, we're not, we're not hunting out West. I mean, this is what we're hunting guys. I mean, it's, it's going to be, we're going to be up, you know, climbing hills, climbing, climbing ridges and mountains where there's trees every two feet. So you're not going to be shooting, you know, more, if you shoot a hundred yards in the woods, uh, that's impressive in my opinion. So it's going to be close shots, hundred and in, um, that we're going to be taking with this rifle. So we're going to, swap out the scope for something that's a little more appropriate for that but that's it that's the update i'm gonna get this thing mounted up um that way i can post that bar scope, get it gone um i don't really have a need for it it's just gonna sit around but all right that's it i hope you guys enjoyed it that was the unboxing that wasn't really an unboxing but that's the latest addition to the uh, scope lineup so I will probably do a follow-up video once I take it to the range and get a lot of rounds through it, let you guys know how I like it. You know, if well, if I regret the purchase, if I recommend the purchase, whatever. Right now, just right off the bat, the thing is built like a tank, feels very robust, very stout. Uh, I really like that reticle um, design inside. And so right now there's a lot of pros in my opinion, plus for the price of, 289.97 is what it ended up being. Um, that's a lot of magnif a lot of magnification for, you know, not a ton of money. It's still um, a little on the expensive side, in my opinion. If you're more of a budget guy, you know, just sort of a regular Monday through Friday blue collar kind of guy, 300 bucks on a scope. That's I know that's not a lot of money in terms of cost of scope, but it is to some people. So. Uh, but it's definitely one that, that would, in my opinion right now, would be worth it. That may change when we get rounds down range. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to get this thing mounted up, and we'll catch you all next time. Y'all have a good one.